stands with us, interrupt and open our eyes to the wonder of this night, that we might catch a glimpse of your glory in the simplicity of these moments. May your light shine. Amen. Amen. Well, God, God, God with us. us. Interrupt and soften our hearts. The message, the message of, of this hour, hour that we might that we learn, learn for, you, for you, and you and have, have the way prepared for us. May your light shine. May your light shine. May May your light light shine. shine. Emmanuel, God with us, interrupt and open our minds to truly listen to all who speak and sing this evening, that we might hear your voice cry out from many lips. May your light shine. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. God, 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 God with us, we are wrong, and the insight to recognize that we have been corrected. May your light shine. Emmanuel, God with us, with eyes open, hearts softened, minds listening, and spirits full, we rejoice that you interrupt what we have in mind in order to bring into being something more than we dare imagine. May your light shine. Amen. We acknowledge, we acknowledge that darkness, darkness is all around, all around. but you are, but with, you are with us. The blessing, the blessing of Christmas, Christmas is you. God is with us. God is with us. God is with us. A reading from the book of Luke, chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. 
and bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they, heard, so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. Thank you, Kenny. O oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. For yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. It's no accident that winter solstice and Christmas happen together. They are both about darkness. They are both about light. All people who look to Jesus call him the light of the world. But in the same breath, we acknowledge that Jesus calls all people who look to him the light of the world. Jesus states, I have come into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. That's John's gospel, chapter 12, verse 46. We can't but help. We can't help but to acknowledge the darkness. It's dark out there, but that's only part of the story. Tonight, we celebrate the light. And tonight is the night for a weary world to rejoice. Years ago, we used to say, and especially around Christmas, not only at Christmas, but especially around Christmas, there was this saying that the Son of God became the Son of Man so that the sons of men could become the sons of God. Um, that's kind of worn out, I guess, kind of androcentric. So I, I say it this way, the divine one became human so that the human ones could be divine. If we are divine, then listen, we are not helpless. It tells me that even the powerless are not helpless. We're living in a weary world. You are tired. You're tired of political impasse. You're tired of brazen xenophobia. You're tired of struggling to make sure your conscience doesn't normalize atrocities, crimes against humanity, mass incarceration, occupation of indigenous land, families separated at the border, contaminated drinking water, deforestation, lust for fossil fuels, wealth inequality. No matter how long these evils have been happening, and how well they are funded, they are not normal. We know and we re reinforce each other's faith so that we can, with God's help, end this madness. The divine one became human so that human ones could be divine. Or maybe we should say the divine one became human so that human ones could be human. 
It's hard to find a historical connection between Jesus and Christianity, but it's easy to find the connection between Jesus and humanity. So since Jesus came that we could be fully human, then my religion is humanity. And humans get weary. Right now, our society is tired. Tiredness can be a symptom of heart disease. You look up heart disease and you'll find that symptoms include extreme fatigue, also chest pain, feeling sick, stomach pain or indigestion, feeling sweaty, pain in the arm or the leg. The world is weary and we feel pain and we are sick to our stomach and we are sweating. A person can complain of tiredness before they are in the ICU or CCU fighting to survive. They lay in the ER thinking of all the times they had planned to exercise more, to eat better. Societies are sick. The world is tired and doesn't realize that plaque is building up in our arteries. What arteries? Our families, our churches, temples and mosques, our institutions, our nonprofits, our corporations, they're all showing signs of heart failure. Consider the artery that we call air travel. You, you have noticed the skyrocketing rate of violent incidents on flights, but especially look at the artery that we call public education. I've spoken with education professionals K through 12 and in colleges and universities, and I keep hearing the same thing from people I know and love, including family, that they love what they do, but they might need to quit or, reti or retire for their own mental and physical health's sake. Our world is weary, and we are weary because we are sick. Our heart is in trouble. So I echo what the angels said. Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. That child would become a man and one day speak and declare, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. The name of Jesus has overcome the world. This child, this infant has overcome history. This child has overcome Christianity. Maybe you reflect on your divinity at times. There is so much, so very much more that you can do and so much more potential in you than could ever be expressed in your eulogy when you die. Before I close, let me say that inside each of us lies endless possibilities. The only reason the world has not fully seen your exceptional ability, your wisdom, your beauty, your overall amazingness, is because of darkness. It's like a house that was built with no windows. The, de de the developer wanted our house to be dark. It's so dark that you have trouble seeing your own amazingness because it's that kind of dark where you can't even see your hand in front of your face. And Jesus told us how to respond to this darkness. He said, let your light shine before others that they may see your good works. So we keep doing good. And the light shines. In the light, we recognize the humanity of ourselves and others. And we recognize our divinity. So we keep doing good works. We keep doing good, which never seems to be enough. But a little light can flood an entire room. When we look at the symptoms of a weary world, it may be indicative of a greater social health crisis ahead. 
our heart is in danger. But stop and take a look at what we have to work with. Notice the humanity that surrounds you. If you look long enough and deep enough, you will be bedazzled. You don't see all of this? Turn on your light. You will see that we are all gods and goddesses, and there's nothing that we can't do. Because inside each of us lies unlimited possibilities, which went unnoticed in the dark. The world we imagine is already here. It's in our songs. It's in our spoken word. It's in our preaching, in our activism with its chants. It's in our children's dreams. This vision is not going anywhere. So tonight we celebrate the light that gives this vision luminescence so that we can celebrate creation, celebrate humanity. Even when humanity is powerless, even when it's an infant. The words to O oh Holy Night are a thrill of hope. A weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Later in that same song, it says, Truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love, and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break. For the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. And, and, and when we really stop to see our awesome surroundings, we will say, fall on your knees. Oh, hear the angel voices, oh, night divine, oh, night, when Christ was born, oh, night divine, oh, night, oh, night divine. Do, do you hear? Do you hear the angel voices? When I read angels, I think, wow, the entire cosmos is working with us. So I ask you to please remember what the angels said. Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is Messiah, the Lord. And now Michael Johnston's going to lead us in prayer. Oh, Lord, thank you. Lord, let the encouraging words of Pastor ring in our ears and our hearts and our souls. Lord, we, we praise you for filling the world with light. Lord, we ask you to continue to bless the world with this light, Lord. Lord, thank you for letting this light be absorbed in each of us now and always. And may we radiate the light out more powerfully, illuminating the world in your holy name. And beloved community, I just ask that peace be with you tonight and always. Amen. Amen. As we prepare to, um, to close, I'm going to, um, you can stick around or, or leave if you like, but I'm going to ask you to take a moment to, to uh, take a look at somebody's amazingness. Um, closer and more intimately in a, a small group. And then you can go whenever you want, 60 seconds, 90, 120, 
500 